Justin Trudeau plans to spend $4.5 billion just to buy the Trans Mountain Pipeline, and he isn't done throwing your money at this thing yet. Typical liberals throwing out someone else's money at a project that didn't need cash, but instead needed guts and leadership. A private actor can't deal with that uncertainty between provinces. We're saying that in order to deal with that uncertainty, in order to assure that we actually get the value from this project that we know is there, we're exerting our federal jurisdiction by purchasing the project. After an early morning cabinet meeting held this morning, Finance Minister Bill Morneau announced that the federal government will be spending $4.5 billion to take over the existing Kinder Morgan Trans Mountain Pipeline, and then the federal government would continue the construction of the pipeline expansion through the summer while the sale is being finalized. And then after construction is done, the federal government says it's looking to unload their newly nationalized pipeline onto some company with more money than good sense. Oh, and I forgot to tell you. The federal government is also creating yet another crown corporation and another government bureaucracy to deal with the management of Trans Mountain's construction and operations. Yeah, an army of government bureaucrats working at Petro Canada 2.0 to make sure the pipeline construction porta potties are gender neutral. Trudeau is buying the part of the pipeline that's already built and already in the ground. He's buying the part of Kinder Morgan that bothered no one, wasn't part of any problems, and was done already. And we know that the expansion project was over $7 billion. So at the very end of this long road, Canadian taxpayers could be on the hook for around $12 billion to build a pipeline that was already fully funded in the private sector. This is a very expensive price tag for the federal government's failure to act. The problem with the Kinder Morgan Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion was never money. This project had all the money and all the investors that it ever needed. What the project really needed was the rule of law and the federal government to step in and do their job and be the ones to impose the rule of law on British Columbia and the foreign funded anti-oil protesters on the ground there who are holding up this nation building project. And while today there are a lot of people celebrating the fact that the pipeline might get built, I'm certainly not. And I think this is the worst possible outcome when you think about the long-term implications for Canada. This is a damning indictment of Trudeau's economic policies and the depths that investor confidence has sunk to. Canada is now too risky a place for a private sector company who's already here to continue to invest and to expand a project that has already been in production since 1953, like when the last shots were fired in the Korean War. But there will now be serious investor chill in Canada because now the federal government who approves pipelines will be in competition with companies who want to build pipelines in Canada. The federal government has already blocked the Northern Gateway Pipeline and they failed to show support for the Energy East Pipeline, even going as far as changing the regulatory climate halfway through that pipeline's approval process. For outside investors, it sure looks like the federal government has stacked the deck so that nationalization is the only way to get a project done here in Canada. And who on earth would want to build a pipeline in Canada if your pipeline competes with the federal government? And the federal government has the ability to throttle your private sector pipeline or decline the approval of your private sector pipeline to protect the government's monopoly. The federal government can now use their ownership stake in this pipeline as a bargaining chip to force the carbon tax on the rest of us or anything else for that matter. If we don't like it or if we revolt against some sort of strange policy or tax that the feds want to impose on us, well then, no pipeline for us. The federal government has that power to blackmail us now. And the federal government can also just abandon this pipeline since they own it if they can't get the appropriate level of so-called social license or consent. Kinder Morgan was beholden to their shareholders. The federal government is only beholden to their own whims and their own desire to please their special interest groups. That should scare all of us. 
only the Liberals could start off three years ago with three pipelines fully financed by the private sector, Trans Mountain, Energy East, and Northern Gateway, and then end up with one unbuilt pipeline fully owned by the government. And here in Rachel Notley's People's Republic of Alberta, she's celebrating, even starting off her press conference this morning with hugs and applause. Notley said today in her press conference that this pipeline is a real money maker, commercially profitable and financially viable. But no one outside of the government was willing to step up and purchase the pipeline from Kinder Morgan if Kinder Morgan abandoned it. But that's not where Notley's delusion ends. Listen to this. So when the BC government then stood in our way and when we were concerned that the federal government wasn't doing enough, we got people's attention again. The wine ban worked. Alberta has contributed to today's announcement by investing or announcing that we will invest up to $2 billion to an indemnity pool that will help ensure that the project goes ahead. <laughs> no, Notley, your wine ban didn't work. And this is just the very beginning of a terrible money pit brought to us by the people who can't fix the potholes on your street, can't finish a highway overpass without coming in $50 million over budget and can't deliver the mail on time or to the right mailbox. Slapping Justin Trudeau and Rachel Notley's smiling mugs on the side of this pipeline is certainly not going to change the opposition to it in British Columbia. It changes who assumes the risk and right now that risk is on the back of Canadian taxpayers. BC's own Premier John Horgan promises to continue his fight against the pipeline in British Columbia and Rachel Notley's former Oil Sands Advisory Group Chairwoman Sephora Berman says that all hell is going to break loose in British Columbia now. Look, I'm not going to lie to you. Some very big part of me is sort of looking forward to the great Canadian progressive civil war of 2018 and 2019. All those radical green socialists who supported the Liberals because Justin Trudeau outflanked the NDP from the left are now going to turn on him like a bunch of rabid skunks and create a glorious divide on the left that conservatives stand to benefit from. And it looks like the first shots in that civil war have already been fired if we check back on old Sephora Berman's social media sites. Berman tweeted, this decision will haunt Trudeau's government. Those of us who knocked on doors for him will not forget that he took billions of dollars from Canadian families to buy an oil pipeline that violates Indigenous rights and our commitments to climate change. The far left is turning on Justin Trudeau and frankly, I couldn't be happier. So far, Canada's federal conservatives are speaking up against the nationalization of an energy project, which greatly heartens me. Conservative leader Andrew Scheer said today, Justin Trudeau admitted he has failed Canadian energy workers and investors, and Trudeau is handing Canadians a $4.5 billion bill for his failure. Now, conservatives should always, always be against the nationalization of private sector industries. And we should especially be scared when it's a Trudeau trying to do it. What happened today is Trudeau announced that taxpayers are making a $4.5 billion donation to his next election campaign. And at the end of it all, we may never see a pipeline. For the Rebel.media, I'm Sheila Gunreed. What you just saw there is the daily video that I do here at The Rebel, but did you know that I have my own weekly full-length show here? It airs on Wednesdays, it's aptly called The Gun Show, and we talk about issues facing Canadian families. But to get access to my show and the rest of our incredible premium content, treat yourself to a Rebel subscription today.